but this is the super basic, really good for learning color theory. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and I'm gonna be talking about the Scale 75 Artist range of paints, uh, which we've just gotten in store. Now the Artist range is a very highly pigmented, super smooth water-based acrylic paint. Uh, it comes in tubes, so it's very much like the Artist type uh, that you find from an art store, but they've been uh, formulated spe specifically for model use. So there's 48 colors in the range and the color choices will never change so you'll be able to mix between all the colors or use specific colors as your base um, i'm going to be introducing them as their basic set now the basic set comes with the primary colors of blue red and yellow uh, there's also the tones of white and black and also a brown in there as well so there's a six colors and if you want to start basic that's the best way to start you'll be able to learn to mix you'll understand color theory and you'll be able to get pretty much every color you need so I'm just going to start with these here. So I'll show you, this is what the basic color set looks like. Now they make quite a few different sets. There's certain ones which are in a uh, flesh um, uh, spectrum, or there's blue spectrum, red spectrum, and such. But this is the super basic, really good for learning color theory. Now, if you always um, want to get your um, uh, color palette uh, simpler, then this is the way to go. So over the years, you'll probably uh, collect a whole lot of colors, some which you will only use once. Um, so specifically for myself, I've gone to a very limited palette and I mix pretty much all my colors now. So you can see all there's the different colors. You've got your primaries, your blue, red, your yellow. Uh, you've got your uh, tones of uh, white and black, and then there's a brown there. Okay, so you see them here. I've got those, they're all in their tubes. Um, just to open them up. Okay, so they're very, very thick compared to other acrylics. They just open up like so, and then you won't need very much. You just need a little dollop at a time, and then you'll mix it up. Okay, so I'm going to be going through all these. Um, I've got a little sample I've got here, which I'll paint up towards the end as well. There's a thinner that we'll be using. Also regular water, which are used for thinning as well, and cleaning. Um, let's get started. Okay, let's start uh, and have a look at uh, the colors up closer. So I've got my wet palette here. I've got a bit of towel for cleaning my brushes and uh, also for absorbing excess um, thinners. Uh, I've got my little bottle of water here for cleaning and also thinning. And then we've got some Scale 75 thinner as well. So I'll show you how that works. Okay, so let's just take our cover off here. Now, if you want to know how to make a wet palette, uh, we've got a, uh, a video already out. So if you just search YouTube for the, uh, the wet palette, um, uh, it'll, it's really simple to put together and it's really handy for these particular paints. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, show you how to mix colors. We'll start with the primaries. So I've got my blue here. Now, these are very high pigment, very thick paint. So you don't need a lot. So you just give it a slight squeeze and see it coming out there. All right, so we'll get our blue. So I'm just gonna make a triangle of color and then I'll show you the secondary colors and then the tertiary colors. So we'll get our yellow there. So you see how creamy they are and how thick they are. So similar to a artist style gouache, Now, the high pigment is really handy when you get into thinning them down. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a flat brush and we'll start playing around with some colors. Okay, so I'll just wet my brush, dry it off a bit. Okay, let's start off with, all right, so that's gonna be our equal part there. Put two dobs there with the blue. Put three dobs here. That's for the, the first um, tertiary, and then one dob there. Okay, so basically we've got less blue, medium amount of blue, most blue, and pure blue. And I'll be doing that for all the other colors, and then we'll mix them up. Okay, actually since I had the blue here, I should have done that over here as well. All right, so I do this.
All right, let's move on to the other colors. So, got our yellow. All right, so that's one, two, three. One, two, so that should be about the same amount. One dollar there for that one. Two, three. One over there. Okay, and then we're going to do the final, the, the red. Okay, so secondary colors are pretty straightforward. I think most people would know what colors you get when you're mixing these together. So for example, if you're doing the, the red and the, the yellow, you can be getting orange. Yellow with the blue is gonna give you green. And the red with the blue is gonna give you purple. All right, let's mix them up. Let's have a close look. Okay, so here you go here. All right, so this is blue purple. This is a secondary of straight purple. And then you're gonna get red purple. Okay, probably add a touch of this. All right, so this is the first part of the color wheel. You already see the graduations of the color and then we'll just continue on with the rest. All right, so here's your straight orange. Tertiary of the red orange. Tertiary of your orange yellow. We're going to do the green. This is the blue green. Okay, and this one here is your yellow green. Okay, and so what we've got here is the basic primary, secondary, and tertiary color wheel. Now, with all this, you'll be able to fine tune in between them as well. And it'll give you whatever color you need within this spectrum. So we've got our blues. So you got your blue, your red, and your yellow. And then you've got your green, your purple, and your orange. And then you got your tertiaries in between. So you got your yellow green. Oh, sorry, that's a yellow green. That's a blue green. You've got your blue purple, red purple. You've got your um, um, red orange and your yellow orange. Okay. Now the other color you can get is if we've got enough of this left. If you mix equal parts of these together, what color do you think you get? So this is going to give you, as you can see, it's coming up, it gives you brown. Okay, so with all these, you'll be able to work with uh, the tone colors. So let's get some tones out now. I've got my white, let's add a little dollop over here. Get our black. Over there. Okay, and let's have a look at what this is going to look like as we we'll place a little bit on each one of these. So this is how you're going to get your highlights with your white. And then we're going to be using the black. And that's going to be giving our shadows. Okay, so get a bit of this. Yeah. 
You see how the tones are already changing. Oh, running out of space here. Okay, just like this. So it's a very simple exercise to do, but it will really help with your modeling in the future because uh, you know, sometimes it can't help, but you need some specialist colors. But you always need your highlight and you may need to mix it to complement. All right, we'll do this as our final one. Okay, so simple as that. Okay, so let's do the same thing with the black. Just use a touch of black because black is a very prominent pigment. Okay, so. See how quickly that just the black powers up over the original tone. So you can see there's already three different tone levels here. Okay, very simple exercise. Now the other interesting thing to uh, know about the color wheel is the opposite colors are the complementary colors. And complementary colors are basically mean the colors that give you the greatest contrast to each other. So for example, you've got red and green, and then you've got blue and orange, and you've got green and red. All right, so just keep doing this, just to give you an idea. So I think it's fairly self-explanatory at the moment. Okay, there we go. So I might just add a little bit more blue here so it's a bit easier for it to see. Used a bit much of that. Okay. All right, so you got your tones. So I've done the lighter tones in the center there. You got your brown in the middle, which is a mix of all the primaries. So obviously you can do your various tones of the brown as well. This, the set does come with a brown as well though. So it comes with the, uh, the burnt sienna. Whoops, pop that in. So that's a natural pigment. And so you'll notice that this particular one it's slightly darker than the one that's already been mixed. Okay, so the brown is going to be great for getting your earthy tones. So particularly with greens, if you're doing military, if you add some brown, then you're going to be getting into all your uh, olive drabs, uh, car keys and such. So as you can see, so we've used every single color here. You'll be able to get any mix you like. So let's do a little bit of brown with a bit of green. So just over here. A touch more. Okay, so you see there, that's already an olive. Okay, and if you want to make flesh tones, you could do basically your brown. A touch of orange. We need a bit more orange than that. Bit of white. Okay, and there's a dark flesh. 
Now this is very, very, um, quite a popular painting system for figure painters. You see as I add a bit of white, you got more of a base flesh. And just from here, there's already three tones of different flesh color. Okay, so there's a, um, uh, a basic uh, guide on just the color wheel. Now I haven't gone into thinning as such. So from now, um, I'll uh, reset up and uh, we'll do some painting. I'll show you how it works on some actual plastic. Okay, so here is um, the color wheel which we played around with a bit earlier. And I'm gonna put on, uh, uh, I've got a new sheet of uh, baking paper there for my palette. All right, so I'm just gonna do a bob of each color and I'm gonna get into showing you how to thin these and get the right consistency uh, to use on your model. So let's just do this. So again, you can see how thick they're coming out. They're very, very creamy. They're much thicker than any other modeling paint that's on the market. That's because they are very much a artist style acrylic. Now, they're totally different to say watercolors. They're close to a gouache type, but they've got a lot of the um, standard pigments that artists would use in the primaries. Uh, and some of the others in the 48 color range actually make more sense to modelers. So they have flesh tones with a particular flesh uh, mix uh, and other military type tones too. Okay, so there's the six colors that you get in the basic set. I'm just gonna get my brush here. I'm just gonna thin these down with water because in most circumstances, water is fine. Now, there is the specific thinner as well. The thinner is um, uh, designed mainly for airbrushing and we'll get into airbrushing in another video. So, I've got a piece, a little sample piece here that I prepared earlier. Now, when you're brush painting, it's with any brand of paint that a prime surface is a lot easier to paint onto than a bare plastic one. So this one here, the lighter color here is the bare plastic. And then this side here is the part that's been primed. And I'll just prime that with some of this. That's a 1200 surfacer by Mr. Hobby. But any uh, of your favorite primers would be fine. The important thing is you just want a matte type surface. So you see how this is very shiny on the raw plastic and then this size matte. The matte actually gives it um, a coarser surface for the paint uh, to grip onto. So it ends up giving you a much smoother finish and also a hardier finish because the primer is doing the main work of gripping onto the plastic and then the paint is hanging onto the rough parts of the primer. Now I'll show you what um, the paint will look like when you paint it on both because the paint will stick onto bare plastic as well. So let's just start mixing this down a bit. All right, let's try, I'll do a red because I think a red's going to be a little, a little bit easier to see. So you see how creamy it is there. So I'm just going to be adding more water to it until it gives me a nice thinner consistency. So basically what I'm looking for is a consistency where it's thin enough to flow off the brush without leaving too much texture, but thick enough so that it's going to cover reasonably well. Now, since I'm using water here, the water already acts like a bit of a retarder. It slows down the drying time. So let's just wipe off that excess there. Oops, it's just moved. Okay, so let's just try it out. All right, so let's do the tip here. This is on This is a prime surface. So you see how it's gliding on and it's, it's a very even coverage. Now let's do the same thing on the bare plastic. You might see how it's natural for this because we're using water. The water tension is pulling back on the smooth plastic. Now it's not just because it's Plastic, if you try doing this on a gloss surface, it'll be the same. You see, as I've applied it, 
it looks reasonably smooth now. So it's definitely much better on the prime surface. Now with uh, acrylic paints, they're always going to take multiple coats to cover. So we're going to be putting another coat or maybe a third coat before it'll give us the desired effect. So let's get into doing that. So we'll give it another coat on both sides. So you notice that after the first coat is dried on the plastic, it's actually covering a bit better because it's, it's ended up giving a keyed surface, which is a little bit like a primer. All right, so that's with two coats. You notice that the primer section is a little bit darker because simply the base color will influence your top coat. So if that was a white primer, obviously it will look brighter than that. Okay, so that's still a reasonably thick mix. Now if we thin that further, we'll bring it down here. All right, so you see how light it is now. Okay, just dab off a bit there. All right, so let's try that up here. See how the tone is totally different? So this is basically diluting the paint to the point where it's becoming a glaze. Now this is handy to use when um, you're doing uh, blending over the top, particularly with uh, flesh tones or even um, uniforms, camouflage on vehicles. So you notice that even with a very highly diluted mixture, it's still covering quite well. Obviously the pigment um, hasn't fully covered, but the paint itself has no issue. Okay, we'll let that dry off a little bit and then we'll get into blending some of these colors. Okay, so let's make ourselves an orange. Do this. Okay, so we've got dark orange, got light orange here. Okay, so just so we start blending this across here. And we get the lighter shade. Okay, so what I'm doing now, this is a wet blend because the first tone I'll put down hasn't fully dried yet. You can also do this after it's fully dried to give you a bit more control. But this just gives you a basic idea of how smooth you can get it blended from red all the way to a lighter orange. And then we can do that all the way to a yellow as well. So, let's do the yellow here. Okay, like so. Now that's with the thinning of the paint. So obviously we've already got to thin down quite a bit, but you can go all the way to a super thin glaze. It's basically almost like a wash. All right, so let's, let's add some more. Now the great thing about these is, you can see how thin this is. There's a lot of water in here. And you see the depth of the pigment is still in there. See how heavy it is? So we've got from paste all the way down to a wash. Now, if we apply it here. See how the wash is just collecting within the teeth? So this is acting like a panel wash at the moment. Just like so. And if we want to use that as a glaze, pop this over the top here. So 
can see how that's influencing that paint that was there. Now rather than use a yellow, perhaps I should have used the black. The black would have shown up a bit better. Let's try that. All right, so that's the smallest dollop of black. Let's add a lot of water. Okay, I'll just do the dog around the around here, I guess. Let's try this. Right, so now we've got a black wash. Okay, so you can see the versatility of the paint and how easy it is to manipulate. The great thing about water-based paints is it doesn't have any smell. I mean, I'm sure if you stuck it right up your nose, you'll probably smell something. But as I'm using it here, there's no odor that I can pick up. So particularly if you're living in an apartment, which I do, this is very good because I find that using uh, solvent-based paints or oil-based paints can be a bit strong at times. It just sits around. Uh, the other advantage is how versatile this paint is. With, uh, with its, um, how easy it is to use. Okay, so that's a wash. Gives a pretty good uh, indication of what it does. Now, if we use straight, thick, straight out of the tube, it has incredible coverage like so. That's just black. And if you use yellow, now yellow is always known to be incredibly hard to cover. You see that? So I should have cleaned out my brush a bit better there. It's got a little bit of black in there. But even with that, you can see how well the yellow covers. Yellow in general doesn't like to cover anything. So let's try yellow over here. Okay, so with one coat of yellow, it's already covered half. Now, if you were to use a, a different brand um, of yellow, you'll find that that will be a lot more orange than it is now. So, if we just let that dry a little bit, and I'll put on another coat, it'll be very close to a full coverage. Uh, still a touch wet. Give that a bit more time. Okay, so that's, that's a very quick um, guide on how to use the Scale 75 um, Artist range of acrylic paints. Now each tube is like so. It actually has a lot of paint inside. So they're listed at 20 mil, um, which compared to others doesn't seem like a lot. So I guess if you look at, say, a Vallejo type bottle, there's many other brands which have a similar sort of thing. They're 17 mil, but these are a lot more diluted. So you end up getting much more paint out of one of these tubes than you do out of one of these bottles. Now also, you hear that sort of shaking around. So I might just bring that out, show the consistency difference. Pop it over here. So you see that it's already Get rid of that air bubble. All right. So you see the difference here? So Vallejo is slightly more fluid. Vallejo is also a very good paint, um, but it doesn't have that thickness or density of um, pigment the same as Scale 75, as you can see from there. So 
So if we were to get the same consistency, that's about one to one. It's probably going a bit too far. All right, so that's about the same consistency now. Okay, so at the end of the day, you're getting more paint in a tube. Uh, it gives you a much uh, denser paint, and it also gives you a much flatter finished paint. So you might be able to see here, some of these are quite, they're drying up quite well. It's gonna to be totally dead flat. So figure modelers love it because it gives a very flat finish, which is what you like to see. Uh, armor modelers, uh, uniforms, it is a very uh, well-designed and mixed paint with super fine pigment and very dense pigment. Okay, so I, well, we've looked at the Vallejo, we might as well look at some Tamiya. So Tamiya is a, a slightly different paint again. So it's an acrylic, but it's an alcohol-based acrylic. So it dries quicker. But you'll see here, so these are, um, are these 10 mil, okay. So 10 mil, but much thinner. So you see there, as I'm already pushing it around, you see how the pigment is not as dense. Compared to this black here. See how dense that is, and then if I thinned it further, Like so, and then thinned again. And it's still got the same density. You can see here, it's still a little bit, um, I guess translucent would be the word. Okay. So there's my basic demonstration of how to use the acrylic paints. You see these are already dried up. I'll try that yellow again. Incredibly flat. This side was the prime side. This side was straight onto the plastic. So it works both ways, but I thoroughly recommend it onto primer. It will give you a much uh, better finish and an easier finish to work on. Okay, so there you go. So you can see how dense that yellow is. Okay, like so. So it's not a perfect finish on the yellow, but as a comparison, I mean, those familiar with using yellows, yellow is just one of those pigments that doesn't want to cover anything, but it's doing a pretty good job there, just as a quick demo. Okay, so that's how to use the Scale 75 paints. This is the basic set. So just with the color wheel that I did earlier. So you can see we've, you got your three primaries, uh, you got your black, your white, and then also your brown. You can get all these different colors and anything in between. So in the center here is a lighter tone. On the outside is with the black, so with a darker tone. But then very easy to mix your own flesh tones. And it's a very um, good skill to learn, understanding how to mix colors. And um, you have a lot more control over the finish of your next model. So have a closer look at the, um, the Scale 75 Artist range of acrylic paints. You find that they're very easy to work with, very good value for money. Uh, so the initial cost is a little bit higher simply because you're getting a lot more material within the tube. But if you want to keep a, a simple palette and you only want to operate off the basic colors, then in the long run, it'll be uh, uh, hugely economical because each tube will last a very, very long time. And then you can easily supplement it with any of the other um, uh, colors in the uh, the range of 48. So um, there you go. Very good system. A uh, system that I will be uh, using continuously and I'll be using this on various other models too. So it's very easy to airbrush as well and I'll be showing you how to airbrush that in a later video. So thank you for watching this introduction and I hope you've um, learned something about this great um, range of paint. <laughs>